Here's the other problem with the church is that anytime a person is in need, y'all go to running and dropping money. But let me tell you something. The poor will be with you always. And there is no blessing connected to blessing the poor other than getting back what you gave to them. But no multiplication. Multiplication is segregated for tithes and offering. When you give to the poor, the only thing you do is help them, but you don't help yourself. So when you give a dollar to somebody on the street talking about I did my job, God like, thank you, but it ain't going to help you. Read your Bible. Charity does not bring wealth. Only the tithe does that. Matter of fact, you don't believe me? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to preach on it. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to the podcast. Beloved, this is indeed your brother, Big VJ, checking in. Today's conversation, we're going to talk about Pastor Po Chop. <laughs> we're going to talk about our dear brother from Texas, Reverend Rip Dinner, right? Pastor Keon Henderson. About the statement that he made that's um that's going viral. And our brother Kyle Jimerson sent to us, right? So we're gonna have a conversation about that. And we are going to be long-winded. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause uh we don't got no coffee today. But your brother went to Starbucks and uh Normally, I get a um, a caramel ribbon crunch, but I'm working on something a little different today with some extra drizzle, and so we're gonna be here for a little while. We're gonna hang out. <laughs> we, gonna, you know, we're gonna talk about um, we're gonna talk about tithing. Uh, we're gonna talk about offering and giving to the poor, and um, we're gonna talk a little bit about legacy. Right, because it's important that when you become a member of any organization, right, you always want to know what is the direction that the leader want to go in before you join first. Because every leader has a vision, and his vision is going to be connected to his legacy. And you want to know, you know, where he's trying to take this vehicle so you can give your time, talent money and energy to this vehicle so y'all can everybody's just going you know everybody, we all going to the same place we all taking the same journey and we're just assisting you on your journey but we want to know how do you see yourself and where do you see your legacy being so we can assist you in you know carrying this mission out right um you know beloved i was raised in the church house right let me start there before I even go in. I was raised beloved in the church house and um man long I, listen beloved I had a if I said I had a great time that'd be an understatement because um my church family was really really like family you know those that was around my age or a little younger uh, to this very day, beloved, I acknowledge them as cousins, as family, like kinfolk. Like, I, man, I know these folks all my life. You know, meeting somebody in the church house and meeting somebody in the street, right, it's, it's very different because in the street, you meet that person. You meet that individual. But when you meet somebody from the church house, you meet them in their whole background, their whole family at the same time. You see them. You see their family dynamic, boom, everything. You see that together. You know everybody. So it's like you have a more personal, a more like your relationship is closer to those that you met in the church house than those that you met in the street or at high school or college or whatever the case may be, right? My fondest memories of me coming up in the church house, beloved, because my pastor passed away in 2002. And I never join another church I never you know what I'm saying I never did any of that after that my fondest memories though was um 
it's the mother's board you know watching mother lewis and mother turner right and mother armstrong and mother williams and you know <laughs> watching these mighty women of god these these mothers put this white on and they sitting on the second or third pew they get a sunday you know when you grow up in the black church beloved it's powerful right because you got your own calendar system you know you don't it's a code of speaking oh this is we're gonna do this on the third sunday the fourth sunday and the fifth sunday you know folks outside of this they don't know what that means but you grew up in this environment you know what that means you know what i'm saying <laughs> beloved my big mama was a part of the mother's board and that's something very powerful for us to see for them to get their flowers while they're living and to get their respect their honor that the queen mothers do and um everybody celebrates them you can see the grandchildren their children it's the whole nine i mean that's for me beloved that's the fondest memory that i have at the church house right my pastor though i mean he was like a rock you know what i'm saying like he was like he to this very day right dig this to this to this very day i still got like videos of him i still got because he was i mean i don't know no other way to say it he was a rock and when he passed away i was already married by two or three years and i just never as an i'm an adult now so just i never just went to these other buildings and houses and, and all of this watching this i mean i never got into that i stayed down on my mission as a married man as a family man that's my journey right so i totally understand how you know our people are connected to these religions because i can i was there i get it look check this out I, I even go so far to say this you know as far as me because i can only speak for myself for me i really learned that it wasn't the letter it wasn't so much of just studying studying the jewish biblical text that brought me to this building every week i mean i was raised there my whole family's there that's one thing but but, but check it out what the black church showed me was how much i loved black people that's the literature was cool it was like a bonus but but dig this down okay my partner my right hand man right he's a muslim my, my brother k dinks he's a muslim and of course i'm from detroit which is also known as d mecca so we have a very very large muslim population right we talk about with orthodox right just you know sunni shiites etc you know what i mean but it wasn't it wasn't that's not the thing for me i can talk and build with black muslim ministers black christian ministers black israelites and i start to notice their vibration and their rhythm it was a connection because the harmony that they were displaying and my estimate was simply because they was original people and I gravitated to them. It wasn't so much about the spirit, as they would say. Like, oh man, you know, it's just the spirit of this, the spirit of that. Like, man, ain't nobody playing ghost buzzers. I can't, that's just not my personal journey. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that journey. I learned I had a deep love for black people. So if it was just a spirit thing, that mean that I could hear the word and the voice of like a like of an Arab Muslim and listen or like a, a Turkish Muslim and but I can't they don't have the harmony they don't have the rhythm they don't I'm not interested in nothing they say I, I I don't listen to white Christian ministers I'm not interested in nothing they have to say like I can you can put on Joel Osteen on man I'm not interested in I ain't interested in I, I can listen to T.D. Jakes I can listen to Pastor Keon. They got these are my kind. These are my I can hear these brothers out. It's just a it's a rhythm thing. I can listen to the black choir. 
You know what I'm saying? Because this is my journey. I can listen to the black choirs from anywhere, from Mississippi, from the Georgia Mass Choir. I can't listen to white folks singing hymn songs because that's not my harmony. That's not my rhythm. Ain't my vibration. That ain't my thing. So I learned that when I, I learned that about myself. As much as we talk about like, you know, this is me personally, beloved. I don't believe in the white Christian, black Christian brotherhood. I don't. I understand that Sunday is the most segregated day in this country. This is where the black folks go worship over here. This is where the white folks go. And this is where the Arabs go. I, that's real. The AME didn't get started for nothing. That's real. People don't hang. No, they talk that talk. It makes them feel better. But just watch how they live their lives. That How they live their lives say it all. I can listen to the brother minister out of Chicago. Easy. I can listen to a black Hebrew Israelite. Easy. I ain't got to strain myself. These are my people. I can listen to everybody. But I don't... I don't you go get Rabbi Shoshorsky, you know, like, no. <laughs> no, I'm saying. I'm just being real. I'm like, I know the science of unalike, you know what I'm saying, and alike. No. I like the alike. <laughs> I don't do nothing with the other like. <laughs> I'm not going to strain myself to tweak my vibration to make it equal with foreigners. I just ain't going to do it. So look, I'm going to show you how powerful and how deep this effect get. People talk that spirit game. They talk it. But look who they enlightener is. Most black men and women that's Christians their pastors going to be a black Christian period a black Christian minister most Muslims that I know their Muslim minister is black like them most Israelites that I know their leader is black like them now watch how this work right watch how this work when you come in contact with your enlightener and now you get sent out on a mission to be a fisherman for your faith and you become like a missionary at heart who are the people that you go speak this truth to now since you got it you know what I noticed that black believer he don't go to the Turkish neighborhood to witness and to do missionary work he don't go to the Chaldean neighborhood or the East Indian neighborhood or the Mexican neighborhood he don't go he go talk to people like his own and recruit them into the faith this is what the Muslims do. This is what the Christians do. This is what the Israelites do. So how does that work? It sounds good playing a, we all are Israelites together, the white Jew and the black Jew, and we all are Christians together, the white Christian and the black Christian. Look, we all are, it sounds good. But I'm looking at your personal life. I'm like, that ain't your personal life. You ain't at the job witnessing <laughs> so maybe love it all that's a different story for a different day so what i'm saying is this i'm saying all i have to say when that unlike is working and that vibration is there freedom just and equality love and peace when you operate in your calling it's different approaches through this because it's not the letter it's really the vibration of the people and now now that we are on this vibration I feel as though that the black preacher, you know, Reverend Pochop, he has a different origin with our community than any of the other ministers do. Because our contact with Reverend Rip Dinner, the beginning, the origin, is the slave quarters, is the plantation. This is the gentleman that Massa put to put over us. This is the person that Massa put in place. Massa is the plantation owner. Massa is the establishment. So when Reverend Handkerchief Head got in front of us, this is the black preacher. Generally, our relationship with him in the villages, he's not going to say anything that is against the establishment. Because the establishment put him in that place to put him over us. 
And while we're working sun up to sundown, as Big Mama would say, can't see in the morning to can't see at night, he is put in place to give us a message so we can cope with this day-to-day -day situation on this plantation. Not to conquer. He's not put there for us to take over the establishment. He's put there so we can cope with the establishment. This is why I joke so much about Reverend Pochop because I know his purpose. He got a 400 year purpose. It haven't changed much. It hasn't changed. Um, Israelites are different because this kind of theology, it came later. Black Muslim theology comes later. So that relationship of the establishment using these brands of religion to kind of make us, they don't have that relationship with that, but the black preacher do. So check it out. Cause I'm gonna go so far to say this, check it out. I'm gonna go so far to say this. When I see Pastor Keon and Clef Dollar, I think Clef Low's pretty cool. And TD Jakes, I think he's cool. What is it? Tony Evans? I think Tony stepped down. I think Tony's cool. Uh what's the guy with the weed? Uh I think he get a new wife every five or six years. What's the brother? He from the DMV. Jamal. I think Jamal Bryant. I think he's cool. I like my man from Philadelphia. Gino. I think Gino's cool. Uh who else we got? I like uh I like Marvin Winus. I think Marvin is cool. Uh, I don't know how he's doing health wise because I'm hearing some things about his health. I hope the brother get better, whatever the situation may be. But I like the whole Winus family. You know what I'm saying? They, they're, in fact, the neighborhood I grew up in, their church is walking distance right across the interstate. You go across the freeway, their, their church was walking distance from where I lived at. I think all of them are, are cool and I think that they have a true, true nature, as all of us do as Asiatics, of uh, freedom, justice, and equality, love, and peace, right? They are just in a structure where they have a natural calling to lift up the people. But in my estimate, they're doing it through a playbook that the playbook is one thing and the game is something different. If that makes sense. You know, I feel like black preachers are very, very sincere in their heart. But they have like a, a basketball or NBA coaches playbook that they're running and that they're teaching the members. But the game that's being played outside their door is the NFL. It's hockey. It's the, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like the playbook they got. OK, so as an example like this. All right, Pastor Keon is talking about giving to the poor. He's talking about tithing, and then he's talking about offering. Okay, but he's he's making, he's splitting them up. He's like, okay, if you give to the poor, you know, God would just give you back whatever. You, you can't really come up off doing that because he's talking really finances. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I'm going to just put this on. I like the brother. If we took 2,000 hours of his lectures and put them together i'm pretty sure us as a village will agree with probably over 80 percent of what he's saying this is just the 20 percent that's kind of and this is what's gonna go viral because it's just sometimes they're not people hard they just had this thing against preachers you know what i'm saying it's like and some of that stuff is warranted though like <laughs> reverend rib dinner he's always doing something weird but let me just go back to the because i don't want to get sidetracked like let me just go back to this all right he puts giving to the poor he put it in this box over here oh man you ain't gonna really come up you're gonna break even doing that you're just gonna get back what you gave now we know that um that's not really sound and right reasoning because we don't give as far as original people we give to the poor out of a of an abundance that we already have you know many of us we have to clean out our closets every single year get the kids to clean out theirs the wife to clean out theirs and we take these bags to the salvation army to the goodwill or to people that we know that don't have what we have we just give it away we're not looking to get nothing back on the back end we're just giving it away 
we come out these stores, we come out these restaurants, we driving down these inner cities, there's people on the corner that don't have. And if dude get a little too close to the car, we'll throw him a 10 to 20 spot, huh? Here you go. Like, we ain't looking to get it back. We just like, man, huh? Just get you something to eat, bro. Get you something to eat, sis. We leave it alone. We're not trying. So that, I didn't understand what he was coming from with that example. But he moves on to talk about tithing and offer it. And he says, if you want to multiply your money, your money comes back multiplied through giving through tithing and offering. Now, this is mathematics now. This is a, this is okay. We're talking finances. This is something the brother talking about mathematically now. Uh, Okay. So who can bear witness that it works that way? Who can bear witness that they got the whole check and they gave the whole check and tithing and offering? Because if we talk about you can give this money and just get multiplication of your finances, this fiat currency. I mean, we all be doing it. We all be giving our whole checks to the, but we know that's not because it's what we know, beloved. We know like no draw least like we know truth and falsehood is strangely mixed. So we know that it don't work that way. But he's presenting this to the people. He's presenting tithing and offering as a way to multiply your financing. Now, I sincerely think he thinks that that's how it goes. But we know, no, it don't go like that, bro. No, that's not even what tithing was even for. <laughs> we know that's not. Tithing was something that they gave to the priest. That very specific office, priest, not the man of God. Not the drummer, because he can, you know, he's the minister of music. They got these fancy titles now. Not the minister of music or the organ player, or you going to bust it down and give a little something to the deacon and all that, and then take the rest of it and give your the first lady something to go shopping. No, that's not how that, the whole, the tithing was just something given to the priest. And it was a family, it was a bloodline thing. This is what the Israelites did. This is what the children of Jacob did. Let's Let's talk about tithing real quick. I just want to talk about tithing real quick because, uh, man, our folks, our people know they over religious, man. I ain't going to tell no lie about that. And uh, Mr. Muhammad always said that there were three sciences that the slave master did not want us to know. And that is the science of business, the science of warfare, and the science of mating. If you want to be able to take your finances and multiply it, you have to get knowledge on the science of business. You have to learn what master didn't want you to learn. Uh, come into a religious house and dump some money on them for something that we're going to talk about that it never was really money. Uh, you know, history is best qualified to reward all our research. So you have to be able to show that mathematically if this is a position that you're giving to the people. You see what I'm saying? You got to be able to show that, beloved. Because I'm from that world. And the language that they be using, press down, shake it up, run it over. Then they start, be, they get these fancy prayers. Oh, we're going to pray that you get it back a hundredfold. And we giving $10 and we're not getting that back a hundredfold. You know what I'm saying? And then when it come from somewhere else, oh, that was the... <laughs> they got a good little hustle running over there. But look, I'm, I'm going to go to the time. You got a bloodline. You got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? When you start seeing tithing given to a person, more often than not, it's a priest that they're giving it to. Even before you see the children of Jacob do this like, as a regular thing after Moses make a deal with Yahweh in the desert, you just, even before that, you start to see that tithing is given to the priest. So the priests have a different office. You have a different office, a different function than a prophet do. A priest is a person that go to God for the people. That's what a priest do. So in this case, we're talking about Jews. This is the Jewish biblical text. So the Jewish deity, the Jewish God is named Yahweh. Yahweh is the God of Israel, right? Okay, Yahweh, his leadership is more like, it's military-like. Is real structured as military and he he appoint positions like a real military general do the office of a prophet and the office of 
a priest, this is how he's screaming, he's streamlining communication through the people. So the again, the priest is coming to Yahweh on the behalf of the people. But the prophet is doing something different. The prophet is going to the people on behalf of Yahweh. Yahweh is giving the prophet a word. And the prophet is taking his word to the people. But the priest is picking up what the people got going on and bringing it back to Yahweh. This is why Moses was so powerful in Israel because Moses was both. He was both prophet and he was a priest. Because, see the setup is this. See Jacob, right, is the bloodline. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had 13 kids. 12 sons. He had a daughter named Denia, right? But this is patriarchal. So we see everything as far as inheritance is going to be only left to the boys. The girl don't get nothing. You dig what I'm saying? All right. So his his setup is like so. Out these 13 kids, he got these 13 kids by four baby mamas. Two of his baby mamas was his own cousins. But that's a different story for a different day. At this line, he had a son named Levi. Right? Levi inheritance was the office of Yahweh, the priesthood. Yahweh is Levi's inheritance, right? Okay, what I mean by inheritance is this. I told you at the beginning that Yahweh is a military general. He's a military Elohim, military God of Israel. Israel is in the desert, and they see a land, and they want to take the land, right? So Joshua, which is a commander in Yahweh's army, they're taking the land from black tribes. The black Canaanites, the black Philistines, the black Jubasites, uh, you know, the black, uh, when you start seeing the war, the walls of Jericho and all that, these are black cities they tearing up, they taking over. When they confiscate all the land and colonize all the people, the black tribes, because they're Semitics, what they begin to do is they stop divvying out the land like any conqueror do. If you take this part, you take this part. So these are the sons taking part to the land. I got to go back and look and see what part Reuben got, because Reuben inheritance was always kind of funny with me, because Reuben he ended up sleeping with one of his pop's baby mom. And his inheritance got kind of funny. So I got to go back and look at that. But the rest of them, they got their piece. They got their portion. Now, Levi, if you go look at how Israel, the land, was divvied up, you start to see that it, uh, Levi didn't get nothing. Because remember, Levi's inheritance is the priesthood. Yahweh is his inheritance. So that means that the rest of the sons had to give their tithing to take care of Levi's descendants. And then when you're watching Levi's line, it comes down to his, he got his, uh, coming down Levi's line, boom, you get a son named Aaron. All of Aaron's kids was to be anointed to be the high priest. So Aaron's sons is the high priest and the rest of Levi's regular sons is just the priest. But they can't own any property. This is the key part. I want you to, this is the part they got to settle in. They are not, they can't own any property because owning property is a sign of wealth. And if you own property, you don't have to be a priest no more because you got your money together. You don't need nothing. But since you don't have anything, you have to live off the other tribes. They have to take care of you. That's what tithing is all about. This is why it was given to the priest. Now, let's come out of the Semitic world. Let's come to let's come to Detroit. Let's come to the Cincinnati Let's go down to Houston, Texas where Reverend Rip Dinner is talking about you giving him tithing. Okay, like, why? He can own property. He That house probably in his name. Them cars and stuff is in his name. So he's accumulating wealth. That, that that's, that's, he's not even a priest on top of that. So that defeats the whole purpose of him receiving that. That's against of why he could that's not what it was set up for. That was one of the he couldn't own. He can be a steward. The, the the priest can be a steward over the property for like fifty years, but they couldn't own it. They didn't own. They didn't own nothing. And last time I checked, these black preachers they not priests. Only Christian group I know that got priests is like the Catholic priests, like the Catholics, the black Catholics. They got a priest. They got somebody. You go in there and you're going to give a confession and all this. And what happens? You give the people come in. They get a confession to the priest. And the priest is supposed to take the sins to the God. Right? And then, you know, that's the priesthood. Okay, you go to the black church. 
I mean, Reverend Rip Dana ain't got no priesthood in there. Him and Deacon Dona are not doing that. So why are you giving him tithing? It was patriarchal, remember. So the so Levi, the children of Levi, were automatically, they were priests, the sons anyway. Okay, so to make sure that that line stayed pure, these priests, they could only marry virgins. They couldn't just go out like the rest of the, Is the Israelites and just marry them. No, they had, to, they had to be virgins. Now, go look at your pastor. This. Go look at the woman. That, <laughs> I ain't telling me like, but I'm saying like, go look at, you know, these quote unquote first ladies. Man, they weren't no virgins. So what I'm like, what is, see, but that's what happens when, you know, when you have Americans trying to keep up and do rituals and this and that from people in the east from semitics in the east and they really don't know what it means go back and see and prove it out yourself the priest only received the tithing it's not the bishop not the pastor not deacon donut not the guy that played the organ or any instrument that they hadn't known it was only beloved the priest that's the reality of the matter and it wasn't i can go another step and say man it really wasn't even financial but i'm not going to even do that i'm not going to go that far it's just i want you to identify the office that received the tithing all right now this is what you call thought wars this is a thought war see all is the mind, beloved. And the universe is mental. All is the mind. And the universe is mental. When you are reading religious books, I don't care if it's the Quran or the Bible, or it don't even have to be a religious book. If you read our brother C.M. Bay, The Clock of Destiny, or Marcus Mosea Garvey, his UNI joint, uh, pardon me, his UNIA joint. Or a book that's written by Brother Minister or Mr. Muhammad, the Minister of the Black Man, uh, Supreme Wisdom, uh, Carter G. Woodson, Chancellor Williams, anything by Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, whatever you're reading, you're reading the thoughts of a human being, right? And then that thought, when you're reading off the pages, you just, you're processing the thought and you have to have a placement for it because your mind is a battlefield. And these thoughts that are presented are positions from the writer. This is the position that the writer takes, right? So, you know, this is why just because I, I can read things out the Quran, I don't have to agree with everything because I understand these are thoughts that's presented as a position. And, you know, at this time, at this day of time, beloved, it's like... Um, you know, history is best qualified to reward all our research. So we can see if that position is uh, all wise, right, and exact. Because we got the time to examine it now to see was this official or not. So, you know, that's a level that you have to get through. You, there's a level, you know, if you're on that level of, well, I just got this out of the Bible. Or the Bible said, well, the Bible said what thoughts? Because just because a man wrote it and some other man put it in this book, we still have to test that thought to see if it's official. You know, I like some things as an example. I like some things that Paul said. But then when Paul said in Ephesians 6 somewhere, he's something about chapter 5 or 6, but something he said to the extent of, Sirs, be obedient to your masters with fear and trembling. Okay, that's something we have to process that thought different. Then we have to say, well, he's speaking to this people group in Turkey, he couldn't imagine in his wildest dreams that they have a mass production of this letter and it'd be passed around the whole world. But he's, you see what I'm saying? So, but that thought though, to tell, you know, but then that's just going back to how we see Reverend Rib Dinner. He's not really in the position to, to tear down the establishment. He's not going to provide you information to make you go against the establishment you got to understand the mass of the plantation put him there so you know his his approaching 
to the village is going to be different. He's not there to resurrect the dead. Just think of the power that some of these mega pastors got. I mean, it's like, bro, they sit in front of eight or nine thousand people, sis, every weekend. That's powerful that you can say something and these people are looking at you and you gotta you can resurrect the dead on a whole nother level. This man is talking about tithing. He's not talking about tithing to the extent that they're gonna build their own bank or they're gonna be he's not anything that's gonna go against the establishment, he's not with it. He's the black church. To be totally honest, is um, they're putting themselves in a the position that they they have become stimulus packages for white folks. That's what the black church is financially. And I I submit to you that I believe these men have good hearts, but the structure, all they are really doing is they are becoming stimulus package packages for financial stimulus packages for white folks. There's 12 there in our estimate, beloved, because I know our, our brother, Dr. Neely Fuller Jr., he says there's nine areas of activity. He put a thought to the table. We examine that thought. We're going to add on to our brother's thought. We say, no, we think it's 12. Right? We're looking at this society in the hills of North America in the territory that we call the United States. We see 12 areas of people activity. We're looking at the top of it. We see the so-called white man. He's at the top of the pyramid. But it's like 12 legs on this pyramid. It's kind of look like a a Japanese spider crab, right? And it's because, you know, the Japanese spider crab got 12 legs. And if you look at how the society is set up with food, education, entertainment, labor, race, religion, sex, war, law, politics, housing, and medicine, the devil puts himself at the top of all of these areas of activity. Which means that if you want to get food, you got to go through him. If you want education, you got to go through him. If you want entertainment, uh, labor, or the definition of race or religion, or the definition of sex or war or law or politics, etc., you have to go through him. Housing, medicine, you got to go through him. When you look at religion, I feel as though that it's almost set up where again Reverend Rib Dinner is not going to go against the establishment so he's siphoning money from the village and this money is primarily going to white banks and white contractors it doesn't come back to us I mean you go into the average black church right and you look at the pews you look at the stained glass windows, you look at the carpet, you look at the light fixtures, the air conditioned units. I mean, you look at everything that's built in there. Nine times out of 10, everything that's in the inside of the building and the building itself was all built by white contractors. But it took the black dollars to get it. And then you take the money and you put it in a white bank and they're taking the interest off it in the white bank and they're giving it to other white businessmen, but it's your black dollars. It's enough churches in Texas where our brother Pastor Keon, they can all put together, get their own bank. But they just not going to do that because that's kind of like they're not, you know, they don't they didn't get their certificate and, and training and they're not going against the establishment. Hey, this goes back for 400 years. I mean, handkerchief head, he's not put there to go against the establishment. Massa put him there to help us cope. With what we got going on Make us feel better Make us feel hopeful And all of that But that's not You know He's not there to do that But we feel as though That the brother Got a good heart It's He's just The playbook that he got They're not there To build You know In my estimate He's not there To build the people To be financially sound Cause that's what's you know that's one of the things that the master of the plantation was against the science of business the science of warfare the science of mating we didn't get that understanding so we coming out of the plantation and the religious leaders that are over us they're not they didn't give them the skill set uh they don't have the credentials to resurrect the mentally dead in these areas 
they can make us feel good so he got the band in the back we joke about the brother we think he's sincere that playbook that he got is just it's all about coping coping not conquering coping so you don't you don't have a mission when you go there imagine 9,000 people showing up every week eight or nine that's a lot beloved eight or nine thousand people coming in sit in the building for five or six hours and nobody has a mission or an assignment of what they must do between this week to next week they just came to hear something for you they just came to hear something good they blessing is on the way tap on the card and pray and you're gonna get the house and all of this and we're gonna let you out we're gonna come back again and we're gonna do it again next that's that's all it is you're not giving a he's not there to give you a mission he's not there to build a strong black man they play like the colorless man over there quick thinking fast moving cleanliness internal and externally right down to the modern times they're not that's not their kick over there that's a kick somewhere else that's a <laughs> that's a again quick thinking fast moving cleanliness internal external right down to the modern times that's a click some they that's what they pushing somewhere else they not pushing that over there so beloved we'll leave it there no beloved we'll leave it there the brother said charity don't bring uh <laughs> the brother said charity don't do it you know what i'm saying the tithing do you know what I mean? Just give it to some poor folk, man. You tripping. <laughs> ain't none of them waking up to resurrect no dead, beloved. They not doing that. They just, uh, oh, like, oh, you gonna cope. <laughs> just think, though. Just think, beloved. Listen. Because we did a snapshot of what tithing is. I'm just, but just think. Them folks that have you giving 10% of your earning, they never going to build a bank. They never going to take this bread and, I mean, they not going to have a situation where they're going to bail so many people out of prison. They got a prison ministry. I, I can assure you, you get a big old spot of eight or 9,000 people. Those people that's in their roof is doing their best or underneath that roof to live righteous. I can assure you of that. But I'm sure they got sons and grandsons and that's in some legal trouble and that's they not gonna put no legal team together no legal fund together to get these folks about these jams that they they get caught in the devil's web they out there so i mean man can you imagine if you just took the state of texas alone all the black church all the money that they raise if they put that in one bank and the interest that they make on that oof, man but then White folks will shut them down when they start doing stuff like that. But just, I'm just going back. Let me go back to my point. Just think, man, you're giving 10% of your income to a man, you know, and then your wife is working if you marry. So she got to give her 10%. And then your kids is working, you know, they're younger, they're working, and they got to get a 10%. And y'all all putting y'all 10%. And they go right to that's whew, man that's you know that's interesting beloved now i always sit on this wise what if you got together with your own family you had media household first and y'all took that very same 10 percent you threw it in the trust just just think you threw it in the trust and then once you do it for one year with your own family you create another trust and then you call your sister or you call your brother with his family and say, listen, bro, we did this one year. We put this money up. We sitting on this. I want to expand. I want my household and your household to do it. We both brothers and sisters. Or we both brothers. Let's, let us do this together. And then you put that up. And then you come to third year. And now you expand it even further. Like, hey, call some cousins up. Call some aunties up. And say, listen, we've been giving our tithing and offering all of our lives to these religious institutions. You know, we've been giving it to the mosque, to the synagogue, and to the we're gonna take one year, just one year out of our life, and we're gonna put the same amount of money, we're gonna put it in our own thing. And we're gonna take a look at it at the end of the year. 
How powerful will your family be? How powerful? Beloved, how powerful? Peace and black power to your family. Yes. We thank you guys so much for listening. For hanging out. Beloved, this is indeed Real Black Cards to the Fun Podcast. Hey, man, that's your brother V, man. We'll get it with you guys later. Peace, peace, beloved, and more peace. Thanks for listening. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Anchor, Spotify and Facebook. Also, don't forget to like, share, and comment on the podcast. Your opinion of what you just heard is important to the platform. So yes, beloved, your comments are the engine and fuel to the machine. Stay blessed and have a powerful day.